This yes. conference will now be recorded. I think it so would be just speak now is, uh, is recorded. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. So my take is, um, you know, how do we conduct a virtual uh, conference? Uh, uh, I mean, at this scale, where you could get contributions from each and everybody, and uh, you know, uh, I, I saw a lot of posts uh, that people were across the globe trying to join in at late hours uh, from their time. So it, it was pretty uh, impressive to see that kind of a gathering and then welcoming uh, to and pretty much for effectively uh, for India specifically here, right? Awesome. Okay, so here's a quick activity I would like us to do. Pick up your notebook or an A4 size paper, any writing material that you have close to you, um, and take a minute to draw something that talks about an interesting fact from your life. So just pick up a piece of paper, take a minute to draw anything, that represents an interesting fact of your life. And then we would love to see those papers on the screen and let you take over to talk about it. Am I seeing Bharat drawing messy? I'm just going to show you His Holiness Dalai Lama. Oh, okay. I'm listening to him as well right now. He's giving a teaching on compassion and how not to be selfish. Sure. Kindness wins any day. All right. Who is ready? Hi, Graham. Would you like to draw something and tell us? <laughs> well, Alamora. Me, Alamora. You know, for me, it was really obvious what I was going to draw. So let's see if we, if, you know, in my life, I own the fire product lead, but in my life, I live in the worst bushfire zone in Australia. And also in my backyard, I have a bushfire, a, a backyard fire made out of stone that I made for my wife. And that's that's me and my daughter burning petrol in it last weekend, which we were doing for fun because she's a chemist. And and uh, it sometimes seems to me like it's all fire all the way. So. I hear you. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> Who's going next? Hi, Philip. Can you unmute yourself, please? Hi, everyone. Yep. So I thought uh, this is one factor that I really sort of felt in the last, uh, you know, couple of weeks and uh, in the last couple of days as well. So it is, um, I, I sort of understood the importance of being a huge community coming together for a cause. And I think uh, that that is really important. Uh, and uh, I think uh, it, it makes a lot of difference when everybody comes together in uh, a, people are not uh, uh, worried about what particular uh, factor they're going to contribute into, but it all comes together at the end. It's all small, small pieces, but it all connects up together and uh, we form the complete circle. So I think as a community, we are pretty strong. A uh, lot of volunteers, a lot of people who are eager to learn the message, learn the uh, uh, the whole uh, 
uh, the the whatever, whatever people wanted to learn was also attained in this whole course. I think that is important. So I think community is an important factor here. That's my message. Thank you for sharing, you. Philip. Who else wants to share? Let's have some drawings up. All right, um, so we move to our next activity, unless anybody else is ready with their drawings. Anirudh, do I see you unmuting yourself to show a drawing? Okay, guess not. All right, so we are at 148, not bad, uh, which means we have about 70 more people to join in. Um, I would love to hear from each one of you, uh, whoever's comfortable sharing on what's the best part about the city that you grew up in or currently live in. We would love to hear about your city from you. Yeah, can I please can I talk about talk about it? I live in Hyderabad. One of one of the good things which I found in Hyderabad is the initiative taken by the the shop owners that uh, proactively they want to have a lockdown for a uh, set of hours, right? Normally they have uh, eight hours where they can do the business hours. They have, they, are, they have taken the decision by themselves, not forced by the government or police, that they'll be open for two to three hours and they have communicated to citizens. So I like the city and their initiative to think about uh, what to call health, right? And also proactively taking decision not, and do not worry about money, but worry about the health, right? For long, longer duration. So one thing I like about Hyderabad. Awesome, that's good to hear. And thank you for sharing. Um, who would like to go next? So I, uh, hi, Dave here. So I stay in Pune and uh, Pune usually has a, a good food culture, but because of this COVID restaurants are closed down and everything. But a, recent, a great trend has starting up. All the home cooks have come out of the hiding and uh, everybody has started their initiatives from home. So you have plenty of options. Uh, if you want uh, food from Kerala, uh, West Bengal, anywhere, you can, you, all you need to do is just find, a, uh, find that person on, they have a Facebook page and you are definitely sure you are not going to miss any, the absence of restaurant services. So that has been a great, uh, for a foodie, it's really nice. Wow, that's amazing. So I live in uh, HSR in Bangalore and earlier today, our landlady was kind enough to bring idlis and sambar for me and my husband. And that's been such a wonderful gesture. I think almost twice a month, she would just, and she's 70 plus, she would walk up to the first floor, greet us on a Sunday morning and just hand it over to us, uh, which is amazing. We don't miss South Indian restaurants as much because of her. Who wants to go next? Do you have any flats or something or vacant where we can join it? Sorry, no, it's it's an independent house, so it's only okay. ground floor and the first floor. It is not a society per se. Okay, so then we would not have the opportunity to get that landlady uh, to bring those things. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> also, the, the occasional scolding that you may have been subjected to, you won't have the opportunity to be subjected to it. 
Okay, so um, growing up, I grew up in Indore, which is in central India, Madhya Pradesh, and I think uh, one of the really cool things I like about my hometown now is that it's one of the cleanest city in India. You go anywhere uh, at a traffic signal in the most crowded streets uh, uh, to these food heavens like Chappan Dukan and Sarafa, which are basically like, like your cow gullies of Mumbai you will not find litter, you will not find mess. Uh, it's also clean, it's also well-maintained. Uh, of course, it's been quite a journey. People were penalized enough number of times before they took laws seriously. Uh, but now, yeah, even if you just walk on a road in Indore, you don't feel like it's a road. It almost feels like an extension of your own home because it is so spick and span. So, uh, that's something I really appreciate. So uh, Radhika, can we get started now? Uh, I think we have waited enough. If the people are not joining, sure. oh, we can't do much. Yeah, they're good. Okay, all right. So, thank you everyone for uh, joining in uh, in this three day long virtual event on HL7 India Connectathon. And uh, we are going to now have a closing report from all the five tracks that were participating on all these days. Um, we have about three to four minutes for every track that wants to report out. Uh, here's having our first one, which is fire starter track. Over to you guys. Uh, thanks, Radhika. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Aditya Joshi. Uh, so Satyam, I just want to check. Shall we share the screen or we just have to speak about? Uh, Aditya, you can uh, you can share the screen. Uh, just give me a minute. I don't I don't find you. Where are you? Are you <laughs> on the top? Uh, For me, I'm on the on top. The... <laughs> yeah, I know you're on the top, but uh, uh, is your video on? Me... Can you make the yeah, video on? Yeah, yes, that then would be good. Yeah, yeah, I have. Uh, yeah, my video is on now. Okay, Sarita, I have made you the organizer also, so that you can also identify the track leads and make them uh, presenters. Okay, so yeah, and uh, Arun. Arun, you are also the organizer, uh, so please uh, identify the track leads and make them the presenter one by one. My network is a little bit patchy, so please go ahead, Aditya. Okay. Uh, sure. I'll take just a few minutes. Okay. So this uh, this is a fire uh, starter track report out, and uh, to start with, I would really thank all the contributors and other track leads. Uh, Amina Sheikh from Philips, uh, Sayali from CDAC, uh, myself. Uh, Sahil from Philips and uh, our other track lead Vaku. So thanks all the uh, track coordinators as well as track leads. Uh, you all have put a lot of effort in last few days to make this track really successful and and helping the participant to learn. So these are the objectives of uh, these were the objectives we laid down at the beginning of uh, when we started thinking about what we will do. So we wanted to give a good experience uh, to all the participants. Uh, who have not even heard about the fire and we wanted to give them some hands on so they they can really feel what is fire is all about like we talked a lot about in fire that there is a api there is a rest api there is squaring uh, resources so that was the thing we did actually uh, before i go to achievements uh, some numbers so this is our reach that means uh, these are the various you can say uh, different different roles people have uh, attended that uh, fire starter track starting from software developer to consultants interoperability leads test managers so this this shows that everyone can go ahead and learn fire um, different roles and backgrounds can go ahead and learn fire if you are from a clinical side functional side still fire is relevant from you for you you can learn the functional part and if you are a core technical person still it's pretty much relevant Another uh, big number I would like to share is you can see the 102. So uh, really it was good to see that almost consistently from Friday evening to uh, Sunday morning, 11 o'clock, 100 plus participants have attended the entire event. 
and in total five coordinators so in total we put almost 2000 hours collaboratively across all 100 participants um this is what participant felt about our session that it was awesome uh, very useful informative excellent and they learned a lot about and uh, i like few of them like made us addict to fire that's that's the that was the intent we wanted to give you some thoughts now uh, we wanted to make give you some learning uh, wanted to put you at some level where you can go ahead and learn the things from yourself so that's pretty much uh, i mean what people have learned uh, overwhelming interesting firing the fire great uh, lovely trainers thanks a lot and uh, yeah that's all uh, basically it was very good to see that people uh, what different uh, perspectives are people have come and they have learned in great detail some of the names of the participants and we thank to all of them so uh, what uh, what the in quick summary uh, some achievements or you can say what we try to achieve and what we actually achieved so in fact when we started on friday evening there were 70 per 70 plus participants who had no prior knowledge on fire that means they have not even uh, has basic idea about the fire and uh, the outcome is that uh, they all have actually done hands on on fire api and uh, not just like fetching the patient detail or observation data so even little bit of complex apis we had a couple of use cases where they have learned how fire is actually solving the healthcare interoperability uh, use cases so they have actually identified the resources for various use cases they have developed the apis they have done lots of hands-on so more than i think more than 12 plus hours it was all hands-on thing so that's that's pretty much uh, about the fire starter track and uh, again i thank uh, chelson india for providing us this opportunity and thanks to all participants uh, for joining in and uh, learning the fire over to you radhika uh, thank you and uh, for some reason go to meeting says that webcam limit is reached and all webcam spaces are currently being used so I will not be able to show my face, but I'm very much here. Okay. Uh, up next, thank you, Aditya. And up next, we have Fire India Profiling Track to present their closing report. Thank you, Radhika. And uh, yeah. So I'm Manisha Vanti, and uh, I would be presenting a track report for Fire India Profiling Track. And uh, if you could see the screen, uh, this would be the overall summary of this track. This track actually intended to attempt to create the fire. Uh, Manisha, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, could you please go and cross? Okay, sorry. No, my bad. Okay. Please go ahead. Shall I continue? Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, so this track actually intend to create five profiles for India. And uh, the scope of this track was uh, to look at the resources that have been documented in, in National Digital Health Blueprint uh, and uh, try to create profiles for them, which would be the foundational profile and should take care of the overall uh, use case scenarios for the country. Uh, the track leads for this profile are uh, Professor Suptain Sarvadikari, Mr. Bharat Gera, uh, I myself, Anil Nere, uh, Vivek Raheja, and also Kumar was uh, one of the active participants for this track. So these, these are the overall uh, summary of the participants. We had over 30 plus participants coming from government as well as private organizations. Uh, Can, uh, uh, yeah, can sorry. Uh, please share your screen. Yeah, something happened and suddenly my screen went. Uh, can I can I uh, share the screen? I think I'm not participant. Uh, I'm not an organization organizer. Actually, suddenly I got a message saying I was made to present. Okay, now. Okay. Manisha, you are the presenter now. Please. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you can see the screen? Yeah. 
uh, okay so we we uh, we all work together and uh, these would be the key achievements uh, that uh, we could list for this track uh, uh, we so far created uh, around uh, 30 plus profiles during the pre connectathon sessions the pre connectathon session uh, started from uh, june 2020 20, from the 15th of june and uh, we had the regular meetings uh, for creating these profiles through the uh, again the collaboration and the participation from the members uh, we publish these profiles through github and also they are available on simplified these profiles were made uh, available for review and we received around uh, uh, now i think it would be 40 plus review specific review comments uh, on these profiles and uh, these review comments have been discussed during this connectathon days uh, with all the participants. We also did a hands-on on profiling. Uh, we took the specific use case on COVID-19 management, and uh, we took the inputs from the other tracks uh, who worked on, on this specific scenario, the teleconsult track and the terminology track, uh, so that uh, the profiling would be uh, one of the fruitful uh, things that we could do. We have received uh, the profiles being created by few participants and those were uh, uh, provided through Slack. So we had a very good participation on this hands-on uh, also. And uh, uh, we, uh, we took, took care of the healthcare domain, the processes and the knowledge uh, that was shared among the participants. And uh, th that was a very good uh, uh, achievement that I could say we work collaboratively to uh, mo modify and update these profiles. So the, the next plan would be this profile which are created during this connectathon can be further taken up by HL7 India uh, for publishing as a first cut or level zero profile for use in India. Uh, we have received few review comments so maybe we would uh, like to resolve them in few next few weeks and uh, as as uh, as we understand the profiling is an evolving activity and it requires a vibrant community to come up with use cases validate these profiles for usability and share their experiences so what we believe that such community including the participants which were there during this kind of uh, should should be should come together and such community should be formed uh, to further and, and should be grown further consistently. So that, that's what it is. Done from my side, over to you, Radhika. Thank you so much, Manisha. And that is fantastic to hear your experiences. Uh, coming up next is COVID-19 teleconsultation track. Over to you guys. Thank you, Radhika. Uh, this is Manik uh, representing uh, the teleconsult, uh, COVID teleconsult uh, group, the track. Let me just share my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Very much. Thank you very much. All right. The COVID-19 teleconsultation track, pandemic and beyond, uh, was uh, tasked with the um, with the task of trying to come up with a use case that will be relevant to the um, to the country and the nation as a whole. And our mission statement, therefore, was simplifying interoperability for India. Starting from there, we had a good team of about twenty five of us, and uh, some of I could not capture all of them, but. This is a group of us that uh, were there on uh, Friday night and uh, over a period of about 12 hours uh, since uh, Friday night or early morning yesterday till uh, late night, uh, we were able to uh, come up with a very simple goal uh, of uh, understanding that there are telemedicine service providers on one side, like RGSA2, and uh, uh, on the other side, we have telemedicine platform organizations that will provide the teleconsultations for any. Can you stop using the internet over and using it? Thank you. 
<laughs> so how does this work? Uh, we have the TSOs on one side, which will post data to an NCAA platform. An NCAA platform uh, is a, uh, a, a nomenclature that uh, stands for um, National Collaborative Initiative for uh, Interoperability. And that will provide the connection from there to the team telemedicine platform organization. And from there, once it's uh, resolved, the encounter is made back to the NCAA platform and back to uh, the telemedicine service providers. So we did come up with an elaborate uh, uh, mechanism and, and uh, all of this fit into our plan. And uh, uh, our seven steps uh, essentially were a collaboration between TSOs and TPOs uh, which happened over an exchange of fire bundles. And uh, these seven steps were uh, tasked with people to go ahead and, and execute as many as they can. And all of a sudden, um, one of us said, why don't we do all of this together with a, a complete uh, user interface to tie from, from the front end to the back end. And we took the challenge on Friday night and all day yesterday, uh, our team worked at it and the notable, notable achievements were uh, during that exercise, we were able to identify fire resources for the use case. We created RESTful Fire APIs to demonstrate the entire workflow. And our uh, participants could understand this bigger scenario too and, and take each and every one of those steps. And the web application was created, um, and which we call the NCAA Teleconsult Exchange Platform. One of our uh, uh, participants who has a company called Let's Talk, he acted as a teleprovider. And on the other side of the service providers, we were able to create a file-based All right, so, so this is the original uh, idea that we started off with in uh, stand-ups leading up to uh, the weekend. And uh, we identified 12 uh, unique uh, data elements, including symptoms and information, preferred language and all, and all of that, and then simplified into seven steps, as we saw earlier, and just one solution for you. And uh, I think someone needs to mute. All right, thank you. Uh, and uh, uh, by yesterday, uh, uh, our team had come up with an actual workflow that was able to show showcase a, a ragu uh, who could uh, come in with a symptom of a, a COVID, approach a TSO, Go through the TSO, the TPO, finish a teleconsult, and back again. The flow sequence was well documented for this use case. Um, and uh, the entire team uh, stood up uh, and helped out in various ways. Uh, some of us were uh, able to participate more than the others uh, because by one day. But we have uh, the challenge that uh, we will continue to. Educate anyone that needs to be part of this moment. Someone needs to mute. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, what next? We are going to, uh, to extend the implementation to other uh, um, other uh, other uh, data elements. Uh, make the fire resource um, an open source. This will be uh, welcome for anyone to take and use. And uh, we will also the UX. And we will partner with players, the healthcare companies that can these and drive adoption. Um, we have been had very favorable uh, responses so far. And so this is how we start off for the, for the beginning of the seven steps. And this is how we end up with a complete summary. And uh, we will be back. Go back to the drawing board and we will scale from there. We are building bridges and HL7 is giving us an opportunity to do that along with you all. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Manik. I absolutely love the idea of uh, how you guys are busy building bridges. We definitely need more bridges to enable more collaboration and accelerate the pace of innovation overall. Awesome. So coming up next is our track on V2 to fire. Over to you guys. Uh, you have about three to five minutes to wrap this up. Thank you.
Amrit, you are on mute. Sorry about that. So uh, in the V2 fire track, we had more than seven companies participating and uh, we had two track leads. And the objectives that we started out on this, uh, that we started this track with were twofold. One was to test the mapping that exists as part of the HL7 International V2 fire project um, that, uh, that is ongoing. And two, to develop any new mappings that have so far not been developed by that project, and also the corresponding automation with it. So for the testing part, part A, we tested uh, different ADT event messages and a few flavors of ORU R01, uh, R01 messages. Um, and we uh, use the mappings, like I mentioned, that are available by the international project. And then um, we used uh, the open source uh, fire converter tool to generate the resources. And then we posted them to test servers. Um, and based on this work, and then the participants actually went to the data in the resources and uh, try to make sense of the data against the VT message. So based on all this work, they came up with suggestions for some missing mapping. And they also identified some existing mappings which are not consistent with the team's understanding and expectations. On the development front, the team had been working for over last one week to develop mappings for Indian messages. Uh, which we had found are not, have not been mapped by the V225 projects. Besides the mappings themselves, we also worked on uh, developing the handlebars for JS templates with the requisite logic for the automation tool. And those, uh, both these tasks were accomplished to some extent, um, and we were able to successfully post bundles that were created. And also the the data and the resources themselves. So those were the main. Uh, I'm so sorry to interrupt here, uh, but Rolak or anyone else who is currently not muted, please, please mute yourself. There's a lot of feedback noise coming in. Uh, it's a bit disturbing for Amrit's presentation. Thank you. So this was not our objective, but based on the feedback we got on the track, um, at least the feedback that we received, um, looks like people also learned quite a bit from the track. Um, and it was also interesting that we had people learning stuff, not only from the connected font event itself, but also the activities that happened before that. So very importantly, several participants of the track have shown interest in continuing the work and improve upon the mappings and the tool uh, to contribute to the larger healthcare community in India and across the world. Um, the mappings developed will be refined and then they will be shared with the V2 to Fire project. And the handlebars templates developed will also be refined and then committed to the open source Fire Converter project on GitHub. So that's what we are expecting to do um, after the connector font. So that is all um, we have, Radhika. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Amrit. And now, last but not the least, we have the terminology track, which is coming up. I understand Dr. Pramod Jacob is going to be presenting it. Over to you. Yeah, hi. Uh, well, uh, it has been a truly a very interesting week, if I may say so. And uh, our attempt here was to uh, kind of bring together two different worlds the uh, you know the healthcare information technology as well as the actual medical world uh, so uh, that's what we decided because that was what we felt would be one of the most important uh, aspects of how we get this to work terminology is uh, something that is uh, quite heavy as far as information is concerned and knowing what is what a particular term represents, especially in the medical world. So uh, without much ado, let me get to my presentation. I'm hoping you can all see the screen there, right? So uh, basically, 
fire supports and incorporation of terminology uh, because you do need terminologies to be uh, in embedded along with the standard codes for them uh, into the various documents or various information that is flowing between different healthcare establishments. Uh, the focus area to understand the crucial role that the standard terminologies play. Understanding the concept of the fire terminology servers and hands on uh, sessions for them. And then also the very crucial roles that you have with the clinicians involved in this whole process. And then the implementation and the implementation experience in doing so. So the list of participants, the track leads were uh, Dr. Suman, uh, Bimesh and myself. We were fortunate to have some very illustrious guests, including Rob, Rob Hossam, who is uh, Dr. Rob Hossam, who is uh, among the founders of the terminology tracks in HL7 International. Then there was Jacob and there was Ryan, both who were part of the CareCom, which is one of the sort of uh, terminology services that we were uh, <clears throat> uh, interacting with. The list of participants you can see up there. Uh, it was really nice to have 35 participants. Uh, actually, uh, sorry, it was 38. And uh, it was a mix of clinicians, as well as uh, fire uh, or uh, trainees. And our clinicians were also including people like, you know, cardiothoracic surgeons and uh, neurosurgeons uh, and uh, all the way to people who are in the community health, uh, from the community health uh, uh, world. And it was really a very nice gelling of uh, clinicians and IT folks. So notable achievements. Firstly, the collaboration that happened, what we did do is, we made four teams. Each team had a clinician and a fire lead. And uh, there was, uh, it was very much team play that came into, uh, into action. Over the course from Friday evening, uh, we had formed the teams and uh, over the course, uh, they quickly uh, got together, gelled together. Actually, we made it on Thursday. And then on Friday, we, they had, you know, some initial trials and then Friday, they were really up and running. So then on Friday evening, we taught them, uh, we taught the clinicians clinical information modeling. And let me explain then what all we went on to do. So after this collaboration and forming the teams, what we did do was we went into the psych, uh, life cycle management of translating a clinical requirement to all the way to making it an artifact, a fire artifact, which could be sent across uh, through uh, health information exchange into another healthcare establishment which could then receive it, recompile it, and then have the receiving doctor or receiving clinician interpret what that information that came through and compare it with what the original uh, information that was uh, done by the sending clinician. And we, we tried to make sure it was as close as possible, both in meaning and as well, like they say, synthetic and semantic um, interoperability. So uh, we carried a very interesting use case what we did do is given the situation that we are in uh, we took the covid uh, pandemic as an example and we followed a patient as they went through the various stages of the uh, covid being a covid positive so uh, what we did do is for example we had a case where we took a patient they first went visiting what is known as a fever clinic in the fever clinic they were found to be that's where they do the uh, you know the uh, sort of tests for covid nasopharyngeal swabs and they were found to be positive and the rule in india mostly uh, in the beginning at least was that if you're positive you have to be admitted into what is known as a covid care center where they have mild and asymptomatic patients then when what happened was when the patient was in this covid care center on the third day he developed some complications he had some shortness of breath and therefore had to be referred or transferred to what is known as a dedicated COVID health center, where they take moderate cases uh, who probably need oxygen therapy. And what we did do is we took the case of this patient, we are calling him patient C, and we took him as he went through each of these different health organizations and made sure that the information and his record followed him seamlessly, digitally and seamlessly, and also made sure that both the sending and the receiving doctors understood each other and what they were trying to get across. 
uh, what I will do is I will show you the documents as they have gone across. Uh, let me take you down here. Firstly, give me a moment. So the workflow we followed, we had the clinical requirement. For example, a discharge summary had to be sent across or an admission note had to be sent across, right? Which then we converted into the clinicians involved who we are calling the fire doctors or rather, you know, the fire clinicians. They came up with what is known as a clinical information model. And that clinical information model provided the framework for the fire specialists in the team to go and plug in the fire resources so that then they came up with what is known as a resource information model. And from the resource information model, that's when you incorporate all the standards and the terminologies and so on, like SNOMED and LOINC and so on. You then come up with a fire artifact, something like say a discharge summary would be a fire artifact, which then was transmitted across to the receiving healthcare center, which was then recompiled and interpreted by the receiving doctor on the other end. The benchmarks we took was one was the comparison and making sure that what the receiving doctor interpreted was as close to what the sending doctor meant to send across. We had another basic thumb rule that any information being put in should, if it's a new case, be maximum five minutes. And if it is a follow up case, be one uh, and a half minutes. This is just a quick something time check, going. Dr. Pramod, a quick time check. Uh, quick time check uh, just time present the summary we are already over time please how much time do i have okay uh, you have a couple minutes over yeah two minutes yeah okay. you take it all right so then this is an example this was what happened in the in the fever clinic and uh, basically they were found to be positive so from there they were referred on and the and the uh, mind you the record follows them digitally this is what happened in the what is known as the covid care center where on admission, these were all the results. These are all, all available on Slack and as well as the XML document and the document that is sent across. On the third day, they had a little complication where he became breathless. And on chest X-ray, they were found that he had got a little pneumonia. And finally, he was sent across to the uh, dedicated COVID health center where finally he was treated with low flow oxygen and, and discharged out of there. Uh, all these details are available to you on the Slack and including the XML documents and uh, so on. So that is what we actually achieved by the uh, teams, different teams. And finally, the discharge summary, what we did is we got all the teams together today morning and they managed to actually go through the whole process in about an hour and a half. So they were really getting their such in the group. Once we have done that, now we've accomplished uh, learnings of, uh, and oh yeah, in the meantime, learnings of terminology server were done. Uh, with the uh, KCOM as well as the IHSTDO some uh, uh, sort of servers that were available. Uh, we were very happy to hear Rob tell us that, you know, that they were eight. He might actually be discussing with HL7 International to see if they would like to implement this sort of a paradigm that we followed, whereby we had the doctors and the clinicians and the, and the uh, fire specialists actually form teams and go through this entire episode from one hospital to the other. And follow the patient through and uh, we were very happy to hear that it was uh, very active participations we had clinicians ceos medical informatics specialists and uh, fire specialists, both experience as well as trainees who took part in it and all entire thing was carried out virtually we have never had a face-to-face -face meeting that's in uh, looking at uh, what what the screen would look for in xml or, or the xml document formation or uh, json Okay, what were the issues? I will ask uh, Suman, are you here? Dr. Suman, if you're here. We have last one minute okay. here to wrap this up, please. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, can I finish? Yeah. One minute. Yeah. All right. Suman, if you'd no, like to quickly better... just come in with the issues. Yeah, yeah. The, the issues are that the uh, fire resources have, have to be very well understood in order to do the terminology mapping because there are a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, uh, calls that need to be made regarding which particular code system to use or not use. So people have to really work hard at it and have to get used to okay. using these uh, resources in order to do the mapping. Okay. Can All right, so yeah. I will take it from here then and what's next. So we are going to leverage the current uh, uh, Connectathon platform 
and we are hoping to actually carry it on with having the team if they wish to do so to actually go on to other sort of workflows right and then also what we would like to do is also work with the other sort of service tracks which uh, had come up for example with uh, the teleconsultation and the profiling tracks and so on so that we can all incorporate our works together so that is it in brief and that is what we'd like to do next we would like to do everything in accordance to the national digital health blueprint so that we have come up with the use cases and shown proof of concept that we can go through the entire COVID cycle. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Pramod Jacob and team. That was fantastic. And uh, moving on uh, from all the closing reports from the tracks to back to Australia. Uh, Graham, over to you. Hey, everybody. Let me fix my camera up. So, so that was. Uh, so, hang on. Before I go on, Kumar, did you have anything particular you want me to say right now? Uh, not yet. Uh, so, once you are done, uh, we will have the certificate release. So, you have the app on your uh, mobile. You just have to click the button, share the screen, and then the certificates will go on to everyone's uh, mailbox. Oh, you'll have to help me with that then after I've done. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, okay. Um, but in the meantime, uh, I, I was most impressed by the event and by the participation. And I have a few specific comments to make. Um, I think 102 people in a single track is the biggest track that we've had. In all of our connectathons, so so, and I can see how much work it was to organise that. So that was, I was really impressed by that. Well done. Uh, the profiling track, you made so much more progress than I expected. I think it's great work. Um, uh, I think that um, oh, it's really important to keep that work going. And I think that I want to sort of, I got I got my own copy of the profiles, and I'm was uh, running it before, but I got distracted by a family thing. Um, so we want to keep working on that somewhere um, to keep talking about it with me somewhere, either on the India track on chat.fire.org or somewhere else to let me know where so I can sort of track and make sure I can help out. Uh, the teleconsultation track, I think it's, it's awesome work. It's well-crafted track and I love the thing it's doing. In fact, I'd really like if we can just write up a little white paper and I'll publish it on my blog or you can publish it somewhere else and I'll I'll uh, tweet about it and let everybody know about it because it is great. Um, the V2 to fire track, really important use case. Thanks so much for taking that on. It looked really, it looked really promising and I'm really looking forward to hearing the work coming back to uh, HL7 International. Um, and and I actually was intrigued when you said the open source fire converter project. And I wondered whether that's one of mine, I don't know which one of mine it would be, or which other one was it the is that the main committee one? Um so let me know about that somewhere so I can track that. And the terminology track again, I was really intrigued to listen to that. And I was thinking to myself, maybe we should we should do something similar. The terminology track and HL7 has been focused on, it's just sort of the work we did to get to this point and it's time for it to move on. So, and then I saw that Rob thought maybe we should do that as well. So I'll, I'll definitely have a chat to Rob about that. I totally endorsed what Rob said. Um, so really, very, I was very impressed. Um, I'm really excited. This is one of the things we've wanted for a long time is to get, uh, a fire community going and enthusiastic in India. Um, I'm really happy that it's happening now. Um, uh, and um, there are, there's lots of us who are keen to support um, support you as a community and, and transfer skills to you. And it looks really promising to me. I particularly want to thank the track leads because I know how much work it is to lead a track. And I know that you don't really I mean, this is not get paid for it or anything, but you do it because you love, love, you know, you believe in our mission. So thank you so much for the track leads. And, and I thought your report back were very, uh, very concise and to the point. Thank you. And thank you to everybody who participated because without everybody participating, what do we have? We have nothing. 
so thank you very much and uh yeah awesome thank you so much kaham uh, it was wonderful having you on all these three days and enabling everyone else to work uh, on their tracks uh, moving on we have dr chandil who is the chairperson for hl7 india and uh, over to you thank you uh, it's been a power pack 65 hours for us in the last three days uh, it started as an idea in less than 40 days back when we all sat together and said why can't we do this uh, this is one of the opportunities which covid presented before us and uh, we had a big plan when we started the whole engagement program with the community about a year back uh, we created awareness then we had uh, meetups we had about three meetups in bangalore then we went to chennai we were planning to go to pune uh, then i thought this is something which should take it to the next logical end to engage with the community and also look at what is that we can do together and what really came out out of this three days is uh, something which of course graham took us through the annals of culture countries people and what this also demonstrated is that the people matter and people are the ones who deliver and for us i think it's a great uh, demonstration great demonstration of how uh, any constraint for example we had a constraint of not being being together physically and a virtual mode we did a connected on and that constraint was broken likewise i think we have major challenges and this was only possible because of the contribution and cooperation from many of you are here and some of them were not here i must thank uh, graham for giving us the support for being with us together on this and helping us whenever we start uh any aid from them the governing council satyam took the lead and we all supported it uh, all the effort from aditya arun uh, the perspective and from externally from hl7 from the community stakeholders we had ncii supported by manik manish sharma uh, anirudh and i think dr suptain uh, i mean i can go on i think a lot of people who contributed to this and all of you who have been here on this Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to be here and we intend to come out with a white paper and publish it and also make it as a starting point for us to activate a lot of projects uh, which are based on the tracks and track uh, outcomes and make it more engaging and also keep it going through with more activities which we plan to make it more immersed so that we come out with uh, more measurable outcomes which can impact the world and as many people have been writing uh, on the chat today is guru purnima and everything that is given back from where we receive we have received a lot of knowledge it only will become more meaningful we uh, give it back to make it more enriching and to reach a greater height and solve the problems of what healthcare it community and what the medical fraternity and the healthcare as an industry is facing i am a practicing physician and i am also an administrator and i am also an healthcare it enthusiast so i think more events of this kind bringing more stakeholders on a common platform even in a situation like this where everything happens virtual and uh, taking it further from here uh, beaming off our energies and sharing our knowledge is the way to go forward to contribute to the next steps and i thank each one of you for your contribution and look forward uh, to more and more activities of this kind and there are a few announcement after this but i think we have to still distribute the certificate is that what the plan is satyam Right. So, uh, you're expecting Graham to uh, go to his link and unlock the certificates so that they go to every of these inbox. So, Graham, if you can share your screen, share my screen. Am I on um, Go to Meeting? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's do it there then. So, uh, these certificates. So, we at trying a blockchain based certificate and this certificate uh, link uh, will go to everyone's uh, inbox uh, please feel free to download the certificates and share the link to your social media channels and uh, so this is uh, the uh, so on the click of the button that uh, graham has the certificates will get generated this is and, the generated uh, files but not yes. click yes all right 
I'll click it. Oh, it didn't do this. And it should work. And the certificates are now going to everyone's uh, inboxes. All right. Nice. So, yeah. So you, should, you all should be receiving your certificates in a few minutes' time. Uh, okay, uh, thanks, Graham. And I'll sh uh, share you uh, two slides on how to access these uh, uh, certificates. Also, here's a special shout out to uh, Gannett.in for hello. Hello. enabling us to host this virtual connectathon so smoothly uh, over these three days. And a very special shout out also to docchain.io for enabling these certificates. Works like magic. Everybody receives it at the click of a button. Uh, thank you. Over Radhika, to you, Satya. I, uh, Satya, I think yeah, you have you the announcement see. in the end. After this, maybe yeah. I think Arun has a few announcements. Yeah, thanks. Sure. Yeah. So uh, we, we have the certificate you'll receive as an email from support at hl7india.org. Okay. And it will have a text. And the link here at the bottom of the email will be the link for the certificate. And uh, then you just go here and make sure that it is uh, not a spam. And then feel free to share it with your uh, LinkedIn profiles, verify it, download it do whatever it is so this is the first time we are trying the blockchain and thank you blockchain for uh, providing us this service thank you over to you uh, dr chandel i had some uh, more announcements to make and uh, let me complete those as well so if you can see my slides so what we did was in the back end uh, put out all the names of people who have registered together so individual tracks have given the names individually so this is the list that has all the names uh, we could not make word uh, word art and other things because of lack of time but you see this is the list of names and uh, not only this we have the list of all the companies just ignore the grand total at the end but this is the list of all the companies there are 80 plus companies in here uh, which uh, participated in this connectathon. So, and uh, so that these were the main uh, announcements that I had to make. And over to you, Dr. Chandil. Thanks, thanks, Satyam. Uh, I think overall it's been a very fulfilling event for us, and we want to keep the momentum and keep the community engaged. So, in that direction, one of the requ requests we got was to create a kind of a special affiliation fee for startups. Uh, Arun, could you please elaborate on that? Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Chandil. Um, just a small music congratulating each one of you. Congratulations and celebrations when I tell everyone that you're in every day. Congratulations. Okay, so congratulations once again. Uh, just a brief background, the seed for today's event was sowed uh, after Bangalore uh, meetup. Uh, it's been more than a year and a half. Uh, myself, Aditya, and as well as Satyam spent, I think so close to six to seven hours uh, having a chat of how we can bring in the community and things like that. Uh, there's been a lot of, lot and lot of background work that is uh, happening. And I have to congratulate each one of you uh, who have been the stars uh, for the last uh, two and a half days. Um, so I'm sharing my slide. Let me know if it's once it's visible. Right. So whatever announcements is being made today, 
a uh, lot of thought process has gone uh, through that. So there are two uh, announcements. The first one was a startup membership. Um, we have been wanting to uh, create a startup membership for quite some time, and it took some time for us to understand the market and so on and so forth. So uh, a startup membership is open to all organizations. First and foremost, you have to be an Indian entity. And second is the entity should have been started not uh, before 36 months ago. Uh, and your last year's turnover should be less than 50 lakhs. Uh, for Graham and other people, a lakh means uh, it's 100,000. So less than 500,000 is uh, the turnover or your uh, sales. Now, what are the benefits that a startup gets? You get all the benefits as mentioned for individuals. Uh, you get a discounted certifications to a maximum of five numbers. Uh, either one employee takes five certifications or five people take different certifications. The choice is yours. But the most exciting thing is, uh, like what we say in uh, India, right? Paisa vasul. For whatever money that I have paid, I should get back. So you will be getting one certification voucher worth 210 US dollars, which, is, uh, which will be given to you complimentary but subject to conditions, you will have to complete the specified tasks. Uh, what are those specified tasks? You will have to, first of all, submit a proposal to showcase your solution. Uh, this solution should use one of the standards, V2, CDA, or FIRE as an interoperability, um, most preferably FIRE. And once the proposal has been accepted by the governing council, you will have to showcase the solution in a public event or a pre-designated uh, pre uh, seminar. The whole idea of a startup membership is uh, now that there are a lot and lot of people who have come and joined and ha have understood the power of interoperability. Uh, and also considering that Modi has now told us make in India and uh, to work towards healthcare. So all these things put together, we have designed this particular startup membership. The pricing is at 15,000 uh, INR plus 18% GST. So if you look at it, the 15,000 INR, what the GST I, we have to pay to the government, so it's nothing for us. The 15,000 you are actually re being reimbursed in that one single uh, 200 and, uh, uh, certification worth, uh, voucher worth $210. Uh, so pretty much it's actually free of cost. Uh, I hope all the startups who are here uh, will pass on this particular. Word. Coming up, the next thing is a course towards fire certification. I was part of the uh, startup, uh, the fire starter uh, uh, group. I have been seeing that people want to learn, learn, learn more and more and contribute towards the community and as well as towards their career. Uh, this is the six learning outcomes what you're going to get from the fire certificate uh, certification, the course towards fire certification. One is you are going to become proficient uh, in the HL7 fire standard itself. You will be able to read and write uh, fire resources and you'll have implementation knowledge on, on bundles, transactions, querying, searching, fire paradigms, profiling and confirmance. And you'll also have an understanding of the data types and their uh, specific use cases. And how do you do implementations? Uh, implementation hands-on, just like whatever you have done in, in Connectathon, it's going to be a continuation of that. And uh, finally, uh, but not the least, that you will be having enough uh, preparation uh, to appear for the examination itself. Uh, the course details and dates will be announced shortly. Uh, we'll be announcing it both on our website and as well as on our LinkedIn page. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Sarun. I think uh, that's a small update on our education thing. And we intend to have more events and uh, more engagement as we said will come out please keep watching our website uh, for updates and please send out your feedback in whichever manner which is easy as an email to any one of us on the governing council and uh, any, uh, i'll hand over back to satyam for the closing remarks yeah thank you uh, dr chandil thank you arun so indeed uh, startup membership uh, we wanted to do it uh, for last one year and finally it is through so that's a great achievement and that's a great news for the community and the best part is it's uh, like a price at a very 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 competitive price so 
uh, congratulations and thank you the gc for that so while <clears throat> coming back to the event itself uh, we did uh, conceptualize the event a uh, few months back and uh, when we did this when we thought about it uh, there was like how would we go about doing it uh, would there be enough participation would their people even uh, know about it because uh, this was the first time we were doing something like this so those were the questions in our mind but nevertheless uh, we designed uh, the tracks and initially there was only three tracks uh, planned that was the fire starter track uh, the teleconsultation track and uh, uh, what was the third track i missed the name uh, fire, profiling fire. Track. Yeah. So these were the three tracks that uh, we had in mind when we started, but uh, soon uh, we had the plan to also people can propose tracks, right? And there was a simple criteria: if you want to propose a track, you should have at least ten members participating in the track, and you should have at least three companies participating. And with that, you had to make a presentation to the governing council and say that, okay. Well, how does it add value and if those were through uh, you get into the track so with that we got two additional tracks the v22 fire track and the terminology track and so we had the five tracks listed initially when we started again uh, it was a small step uh, we reached out to people and uh, we reached out to chat.fire.org and the community and uh, hl7 international came uh, and supported us uh, to start with then uh, we wanted a place to publish again uh, hl7 confluence uh, was useful to us so all the tracks and everything was listed on the hl7 international confluence and from there on uh, we started building the community the first thing was let's identify the track leads so we identified each and every track leads make sure that they are committed they do it so that's how the tracks got formed and after that uh, we had expert sessions and experts uh, and that was also a fantastic thing we just reached out to people uh, whom we had knew and they just agreed to help us out so john murky uh, then uh, nagesh vaishyam then uh, hans uh, then the firely guys uh, rob hasam all these guys and uh, in fact graham right so graham was uh, we were actually supposed to have a physical on premise developer conference during this time period but due to covid we converted that into a uh, 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 a connectathon. So, and Graham, uh, thank you for being with us for all the three days, right? We just wanted, uh, we just uh, requested uh, like a couple of hours, but uh, you were uh, very generous to give us so many hours, and uh, the teams really benefited out of it. Good, I'm glad so, it's worth worth it from my point of view. Yeah, and, and it also showcases uh, the energy level. So, when we started the initial first week. Uh, we just had uh, like five or ten registrations, but uh, then the teams come along, marketing started, the people started thinking about it. We started video channels, YouTube's market, uh, like then we started, I, I think a lot of volunteers came up and uh, started doing uh, uh, presentations, videos, animations. And if you see our LinkedIn feed and the Twitter feed and all, these are all volunteer materials. We From professional, we just had one uh, brochure and that's it. So that's the power and then nrcs came along nrcs is the national resource center for ehr standards they came along and supported us and that became a, a major uh, boost for us and then uh, gannet the platform right so they came up and said okay we can host you on this and this is the gannet platform that we are all talking about gannet is a platform uh, it's a local made and it has the go to meeting at the back end so we are doing on this so slowly we started and today we are 225 the total strength of registered people are 225 so i want to thank each and every one of the participants and the track leads and the mentors and uh, the organizers and especially you uh, graham and all the community thank you very much uh, for coming together supporting it doing it for the first time in india uh, and something that we all believed that we can do it but we did not think that it will go to this scale right so it's contribution to everyone and thanks everyone over to you uh, dr chandil for the profiling yeah thank you so we intend to also release the profiles which have emerged out of this meeting 
uh, for further comment and further work from the general public and the enthusiasts, IT care enthusiasts, and coordinate with it to make it as India specific profiles. So, thank you. So I think it's been overall a great learning. Uh, yeah, I mean, one of the long term agenda we had at HL7 India was to have a country specific profile, uh, which has now become a reality, uh, which is something which I had personally been at it for the last two terms I've been as a chair. And I feel one of the achievements uh, of me being a chair is starting to work on the country specific profiles. And not every affiliate of HL7 International has this kind of uh, expertise and focus to develop country specific profile so we are proud as a country to say that we do also have now a country specific profile uh, do we get to release that now or yeah uh, we can so uh, we can and it's just to uh, like punctuate what dr chandel said uh, we have we are releasing the profiles draft profiles for community review we are not claiming that these are perfect and uh, these are uh, ready to go but we have made a start and we have uh, a version of it out so from here it can only get better so yes dr chandel i'll uh, give you the link to the github no we could also send it individual oh, okay how do you want me to do it share it in the uh, chat yeah that will be good or you can share your screen uh, what however it works you, yeah, I think it's shared. In I the think uh, Satyam, uh, chat. if oh, we can uh, send it. Yeah, already it's shared in the chat, so it's there. I uh, take yeah, a look so, at it. Uh, yeah, I would uh, suggest Satyam if we can send a summary uh, email with all these links that would help and that will stay long. We'll do. That's the plan, uh, Devrata. And uh, I have also posted you. Uh, uh, blog link uh, that is there on uh, yeah this will chat. be circulated to all of you yes yes and also there is a blog link if you see that blog actually covers like the thought yeah. about about the connectathon and what we plan to do next so all the things are there in the blog as well so and uh, this is the first event that the technical committee of hl7 india uh, driven so this is the that's a big shout out to the technical committee uh, technical committee members please raise your hand and if you're on the video please raise your hand uh, arun vaku manisha yes yeah, me too yes so and most other folks uh, have not joined but uh, the technical committee uh, has uh, done a lot thank you over to you dr chandel So, uh, okay, in absence, I'll just take two more minutes. So two more announcements, social media announcements. The hashtag for the event is ha uh, hashtag connectathon 2020. Please share your, uh, please share in the social media how you felt about the event. So there is already a feedback survey that I have circulated. Please fill that up, upload your images. I'll make a collage of it and send it back to all of you. And also please share your feedback on the social media so that the message goes across to all, all the wider community and they get to see the vibrancy and they just join the community. As Graham mentioned earlier, fire or the standard is not just specification. The major chunk of the specific uh, standard is the community. If there is a community behind it, uh, any standard can flourish right though standard needs to have basic qualities but the community and the adoption and the implementation drives the success of the uh, standard with that uh, i close uh, the connectathon uh, thank you all Thank you. Sat uh, Satyam, actually one thing, uh, if, while you're sending an email, please include the uh, internet, uh, sorry, LinkedIn profiles of